What's going on, guys? Nathan Lombardi here with Lambo Media. I'm Christian Bergman, former pitcher for the Seattle Mariners and Colorado Rockies. And welcome back to another episode of the Walk It Off podcast on Walk It Off Wednesday. And make sure you guys subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit, give us a thumbs up on this on this segment if you haven't already. And make sure to follow us on Instagram as well at walkitoff underscore podcast. The link will be in the description. And in this week's episode, we'll later be joined by a very special guest. Uh, he's a 2022 high school graduate, a Vanderbilt commit. Uh, he's the son of an MLB Hall of Famer, uh, Andrew Jones. His name is Drew Jones. He'll be joining us a little bit bit later but before we get into that guest appearance uh, let's talk a little bit about the young phenoms uh fernando tatis jr's whole drama situation going around in the mlb it really started when uh the padres were facing the rangers in a game this season uh pretty recently and they were up seven in the eighth inning and fernando tatis took a 3-0 uh 3-0 fastball outside uh to the opposite field for a home run and took it to the seats and uh the rangers manager and the pitcher weren't too happy about about that uh, because they were up by seven in the eighth inning and um, I, my personal opinion is that it's not the wrong move I, don't, I really don't think anyone can change my opinion on that I will justify that reasoning a little bit later but Christian first and foremost I want to hear your thoughts on this yeah I think it's kind of a stupid <laughs> uh, thing to say that you know, just because you're up by a bunch, like what everybody's yeah. supposed to roll over to short on the first yeah. pitch now, like, yeah. you know, that, that's stupid. I've also thought it was stupid that you can't drag bunt a no hitter, like and that stuff where it's like, oh, you know, we're trying to get the game over with, or we want to allow the other guy, you know, an opportunity to either like get out of the inning or, yeah. you know, get his no hitter or whatever the case may be. I think that's dumb. Yeah. The whole point of playing the game is to have a competition. Exactly. And if you're not getting the opponent's best effort, uh, then that defeats the whole purpose. So, yeah. um, and as it relates to me personally, uh, when I saw that, I got to thinking, I was like, you know what? I think I'm pretty sure May Machado hit a 3 0 homer off me a couple of years ago. And uh, but I didn't really think anything of it. And then one of my buddies sent it to me and they said, Hey, is this you? Uh, is this you pitching with Manny Machado hit a 3 0 yeah. homer? What I didn't realize was that Chris Woodward was the third base coach. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it was kind of obviously ironic that uh, Machado was the one that got thrown at, Woodward was the one who was all pissed off about it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, at the time when Manny Machado did it, nobody cared. I didn't yeah. care. Yeah. You know, I you know threw a three zero bad cutter up over out over the plate. Yeah, go ahead. You know that's yeah. my fault. I don't yeah. expect you to take it because it was seven to one or whatever it was. It's stupid. Yeah. Even even Chris Woodward uh, in a press conference, I think after the game, he even said, "My players don't. My players don't give up. My players don't quit." My players fight for every AB. So if you guys are fighting for every AB up through the ninth inning, then why would they give you the slightest opportunity to, to come back from that deficit? You, yeah. We just saw the athletics come back from two, what was it, five-plus run defic deficits uh, right. last week. H how do you know that you guys aren't going to have a monster eighth, monster ninth? They still had nine outs to work with, yeah. and they were down by seven before that pitch. So Tatis, and that puts the young guy, he's having fun. That put him above the best player in baseball to lead the link league in home runs with his 11th home run of the season. So he's just having fun. He's he's putting his uh, putting runs on the board for his team, uh, getting some more insurance runs. So I can see like maybe if they're like stealing every pitch or like e even that I don't I don't think is necessarily wrong at that level. But I mean some people could say that that that's taking it too far. But I really don't think that's taking it too far. And, uh, I think Tatis is able to hit, hit a 3-0 fastball when it's right there, and we've already like I don't I don't know I just I, I don't understand why they made a whole scene out of this the Rangers and I don't I don't see why uh, Chris Woodward and um, was making a big deal out of it when he just saw Machado do that just like you mentioned a couple years back against you so I don't yeah. know that's that's my whole thing about that. Yeah, I agree. I mean, there's probably a, 
there maybe is a limit on that. Like, you know, should guys be stealing? But, you know, at the same time, no. I, I'm going to go ahead and say, yeah. you know, if you have an opportunity in the game to get a hit, score a run, yeah. whatever the case may be, there, there's no situation where you're not allowed to do it. Yeah. I think even stealing bases, like if, if the defense is going to let you steal a base, I mean, it's called defensive indifference if they don't attempt it. But, I mean, you know, if you don't like it, throw the guy out. Yeah. <laughs> and another thing I just thought about, like, with this season with COVID going around and, you know, owners and uh, MLB associates not wanting the players to be at ballparks too much and wanting to, them to limit uh, the regular season to 60 games this year. What if, like, what if multiple teams tie and they can't add an extra game to break that tie? What if they look at run differential? It's, it, there you go. It's, it's, not, it's not just, like, it's not just the, affecting the short term. It, it could affect us in the long term. Like we mentioned in the past with everything going on. Um, so they could look at run differential and then that could be the, that could be the what? What? Was that a three run home run? Grand Slam. Oh yeah, okay, Grand Slam. That could be the four runs that makes a difference if they make the playoffs or not. Yeah. So, so, so that could be the difference, and that really, that's really our whole thing on it. That's my whole my my whole justification on this Tatis case uh, surrounding the young phenom. Uh, it's gonna happen to him. He's gonna get hate because he's he's gonna be the face of baseball here in the next few years. If if he isn't already this season, he's on track to possibly win MVP. So that really wraps that up. Uh, so let's transition into the uh, guest appearance of Drew Jones. What's up, everybody? Today we're joined by our first high school guest here on the Walk It Off podcast. Uh, in his sophomore season at Wesleyan High School in Georgia, uh, hit 463 with six homers, 41 RBIs, um, committed to Vanderbilt. Um, and he's now going into his junior season uh, at Wesleyan High School. Uh, committed, obviously, to play to play at Vanderbilt, and of course, son of uh, former Braves legend Andrew Jones. Drew, thanks for coming on with us. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me. Yeah, man. So <clears throat> you're in your junior year now of high school. What's uh, you know, what's that look like right now? Are you are you going into school? Or are you you know, what's baseball look like? What's going on now? So for right now, my school's in a hybrid situation. So we go to school one day and then we're online another day, but I'm just choosing to stay all online. So gotcha. I don't have the risk of just going into class and all that. But yeah. um, as for right now, travel baseball is still kind of flowing. I mean, I'm done right now because it, it's between our 16 and 17 season. So I'm just waiting for the 17 season to start back up with gotcha. practice and things like that. But as for high school baseball, I'm mainly just trying to get out on the field and see my teammates. But we're free to use the field. It's open. So, Is is your spring season still starting at the same time, or is it pushed back at all? Uh, as for right now, it's still going to start early February. Okay. So I think it's still still in the running for on time. Yeah, that's good, man. So obviously, Christian mentioned, uh, Drew, you're obviously a Vanderbilt commit. Uh, you obviously had offers from uh, other prestigious colleges as well. Why Vandy? Uh, just the coaching, honestly. Um, they're known for having good coaching, and they'll be able to develop me to take me to the next level or whatever I want to do after that. And um, the school is great also, so you can get something good out of going to college there. Uh, because education is going to take you far, too, in case something happens with baseball that makes me not be able to play or anything. I can keep moving on in education and stay at Vanderbilt. Yeah, yeah. man. So uh, what I saw, like, kind of in your in your bio, you, you kind of play all, all over the field, don't you? Is there any position that you, like, play the most? or? I'm a main outfielder. I play a little bit of infield, but, um, yeah, that's pretty much it, just outfield. I just kind of keep your options open, I guess. <laughs> you even got on the mound, too. Do you like pitching? Um, I think I'm about done pitching. I'm getting towards the end of just just going to call it quits and probably just yeah. stick to doing outfield and infield. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. Do you, do you talk to any guys already at Vanderbilt just for advice or, or stuff of that nature? Uh, I used to talk to um, Harry Ray, Harrison Ray. But he's in the league now, but 
Yeah. Talked to him a few times. I don't really ask. I shouldn't say I don't want to, but I haven't really asked him for any help mainly because okay. I don't like tend to like ask like guys like that. I mean, they're going to, I mean, they, they know a lot too, but I just don't, I don't know. I just haven't like had the opportunity to talk to them or anything like that. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, I mean, you got plenty of time. <laughs> You're only a, a junior now, so, you know, you got plenty of time to take care of school now and just keep getting better at baseball and you'll be all good. Yeah. At what point, Drew, did you realize that, you know, baseball could be something that, you know, uh, you really do in the future and you could you could take to the next level? Uh, 14, 14 maybe. Um. I really started getting into – well, I mean, I was always into baseball, like, since, like, really young. But um, 14 really, like, sparked it for, like, you should think about moving on to college and things like that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, 14, 14 and 15, for so freshman year high school too. And also that's pretty much where I was, like, I need to make a decision on what I want to do for the rest of my life, basically. Okay, yeah. So yeah, how many uh, – or, like, how how soon when you hit high school did you start getting, like, you know – because I went through the process, too. And, you know, how soon did you start getting letters and um, have people come to your games and stuff? So, um, at 14, didn't nobody – I didn't really – I was just, like, kind of – I shouldn't say below average, but – or on average, but, I mean, like, I wasn't, like, one of the top – players in the country like I wasn't a no no name at the time when I was like 14 but 14 is when I started like really like getting to like developed I should say and then I played in the perfect game select festival at 14 so 2018 I think 2018 and um after I got back a few weeks later I started talking to I I started talking to two colleges and then after my freshman season, I started talking to a few more and then uh, went down to Florida and then a few like MOB guys came up to my parents and things like that. But mainly just like right at the beginning of freshman year is when it started. And then I committed going into sophomore year. Okay. So you're, you're also a high school hooper. Is that something that you're still, you're still doing and working on? Um, I quit this oh, okay. year just to focus on baseball, but um. It sucks. I mean, I love the sport. I love, like, being a teammate to everybody in basketball, too. But um, it just wasn't going to take me any further, pretty much. Yeah. Freshman and sophomore year, how, how much do you think that athleticism and conditioning from, from basketball benefited you on the diamond as well, if it did at all? So, freshman year, uh, it really made a difference. Because going from, like, playing eighth grade basketball, I should say, it was only, like, half the – amount of time is varsity basketball when I started so I didn't start on varsity as a freshman but I played var- or split time so I went JV and varsity and um just like going like to practice till like 5 30 in the afternoon from three o'clock really like made a difference with like speed and agility and things like that yeah and then I broke my ankle going into the baseball season in freshman year so I only got to play half the season so that took down a lot of like agility and speed that I had but then I just kept working on it over the summer too and then the whole sophomore season I was a starter so I was running up and down in the court all the time and working on that and I got a lot faster from that too so it helped definitely helped a lot yeah for sure so you, you mentioned that you experienced a broken ankle uh how is that for you mentally and how, how are you able to overcome that uh without without uh, experiencing too much of a Uh, a mental toughness and how are you able to overcome that um just try and think positively like what could come out of having a broken ankle um it sucked obviously when it happened Uh, I was like man like baseball season about to start up I just kind of don't want it to be like a break I want it to be something that I could like play on anyway like even if it was like like a hairline fracture or something that I could just play through and just like wear an ankle brace or something and then play only like halftime. But just, I wanted to play my freshman season. Like that's all the only thing I wanted to do. Uh, I wanted to be a starter on varsity and that's my, that was my goal at the beginning of the year and then broken ankle. But then after I broke my ankle, I came back and it was 
I had like a few games. I had like one or two games where I just wasn't on. And I was like, of course, I was like mentally messed up about that because I wanted to be like, I wanted to prove like a point that like as a freshman, I could, I need to be here. Yeah. And then a few games later, um, two grand slams in one game. So that really brought my. <laughs> my That'll turn things around pretty quick. And then the rest of freshman year, I just continued off of that game and then it just kept going. But um, just thinking positively, I mean, like injuries, like they're going to happen. They suck, but you just got to think positive and think of what the outcome could be. Yeah, for sure. That, that's a that's a very good way to think about it. I think one thing, you know, how, how many games is a high school season? 25, 30 games? So we're only allowed to play 30, but we yeah. play it, I think. 27 or something because of yeah. the rain but so yeah like you, know, you want to be able to play as many of those games as you can because it's you know it's it's a short season but uh, that's great that you you know overcame that um so i mean you don't have to go into specifics or anything but is there any you know aspiration to go into pro ball early um or you know or at this point are you like committed to to go to college and is there any situation you could see you know it just depends on mainly like where and what the opportunity is in the league, like right. money wise and play and like me as a player. And if I know I can, or if I'm like developed enough to be in the league at the time, mm -hmm. then I mean, that's the right, that's the right move. But college is always a good option too, because you get to skip most of the development stages in the MLB and you're going to college. Right college experience and you get the education but um if the opportunity is right and the time is right for me to go to the league then of course I'm gonna go yeah for sure yeah well Christian mentioned that uh obviously your dad is Andrew Jones obviously a hall of famer uh uh has MLB experience as well did you feel any added pressure on you growing up to you know maybe perform well or uh maybe reach expectations at all um of course I mean um it sucks, like, knowing that, like, you're his son and, like, I want to be my own player. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be known as Andrew Jones' son. Like, yeah. that's why I'm Andrew Jones instead of just Andrew Jones. But, I mean, it it's hard to deal with, but I just try and focus on my game and not – he's a good teacher. I mean, he's going to teach me a lot of things that he knows about the game right. and things that he's done wrong that I'm doing wrong too, and he fixed it so he can fix me. and. Yeah, just I'm just trying to focus on myself mainly. Is there a is there a player you kind of look up to in the league now, or you kind of moderately game after now? Uh, Mike Trout mainly. Um, That's a good one. <laughs> he, I mean, he's he's a goat, obviously, but um, like he's like you can just tell he's a good teammate. Like his the guys like him. He likes to be around his teammates too, and he's going out there every day and working extremely hard for where he's at. Yeah, for sure. For sure, Drew. Well, uh, to wrap it up, what would you say is one thing that maybe a lot of people wouldn't know about you? It could be on or off the field. I'm an expert glove molder. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's a good, that may be my favorite one so far. Is that what your teammates ask you to do? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm in the process of molding one right now. I might – I think I'm going to have, like, two more maybe that I have to do. Is there, like, a, a secret trick? Or uh, just, like no, – just I don't know. I don't know what it is. I made – You're just my, a natural. <laughs> I just made my last glove, and it was really good. And my teammate, like, wanted to use it because it's an infield glove. Uh, and he was using it, and he was like, this is nice. So he just gave me his, this brand-new one, this Wilson. Uh-huh. I'm just breaking it in right now. Are you more of a Rawlings or a Wilson type of guy? It's really up in the air. Uh, I used a Wilson this season, but um, I think I'm going to switch back to Rawlings. Okay. I don't know. I, I like Wilson, but um, yeah, it's just there's a lot of strings and things like that to it. Yeah. Okay, I got you. Yeah. That's something a expert glove molder would pay attention <laughs> to. <laughs> I'll tell you my my glove molding experience pretty much uh, consisted of playing catch with it until I felt like, yeah, I'm not going to drop anything in a game. 
<laughs> that's I mean that's me too. I mean I don't I don't break my gloves in like extremely tough like right. where everything like goes in on the first try. Like I get in the game and it's still kind of stiff. So like yeah, just two hands and then That's good, man. I like that one. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> Hey, man, thanks for coming on. Uh, good luck this season once everything gets going again. Um, looking forward to following your career, and and uh, best of luck to you. All right, thank you, guys. Yeah, thanks, Drew. Now that we wrapped up that amazing guest appearance of Drew Jones, let's transition into the fan question for this week. It's from Chris on Instagram. He asked, will the Rockies return to their winning ways like they were at the beginning of this season? Christian, I'll let you kick this one off. Yeah, I, I think, you know, they're hitting a bit of a rough patch. And, um, but, you know, like we've talked about before, you know, they've got all the tools, uh, you know, to really make a run at it. And, um, you know, it, it wasn't realistic to think that they were going to, yeah. you know, continue at the pace they were at. So, yeah. um, you know, I think these next two, three weeks are going to be important um, because I think once you're, you know, past, they'll be coming up on just about the halfway point. Um, you know, the more, the better they can do the next two, three weeks, uh, the better position they'll be in. But, you know, I think they'll, uh, I think they'll do just fine. Their pitching's got to get back on track. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, Blackman's still, still hitting the ball well. Nolan's always, you know, a threat. So, um, you know, I think we'll see, I think we'll see them pick it up here in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, most definitely. I, I mean, I think it's just their offense that needs to pick it up. Like they're, all, they obviously have the capability to dominate, dominate all around at every ballpark, not just at Coors Field, like people say. Um, they obviously have the capability to dominate against every team. Um, uh, obviously, Nolan has tremendous capability. He's not, he's not off to the best start. He's at about a two thirty batting average. Uh, but he, he can definitely pick that up. He can definitely get out of that slump. Uh, Daniel Murphy, 282 bat, batting average, and Blackman in the last seven games is hitting under 300. Uh, but all of those guys have the capability to pick it up. You know, their pitching is solid. Um, they haven't done the best. Their bullpen in particular uh, in the past few games. But they still are the, – the, the pitching staff as a whole still has the fifth, fifth lowest ERA in all of baseball with a 3.73 ERA. So their defense is good. Their pitching is solid. I think their offense just needs to pick it up here in the next few games. And like Christian mentioned, you know, these le- next few weeks are really going to matter uh, to, 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 to determine what the playoff picture is going to look like for them because uh, these last few games are, haven't been too well for them and uh, they, haven't, they haven't been on their winning ways like they were on the, at the beginning of the season. But, you know, I still have a lot of trust in them. I'm sure Christian does as well because, you know, they're obviously a de- dominant team with a ton of capability to dominate in the MLB uh, from, from one through nine. They have a stacked lineup. Their pitching staff is great, young, and uh, they also have veteran experience as well. Amazing, amazing defense as well. Nolan Story, David Dahl, Walters behind the dish. You know, they're stacked all around and they have the capability to dominate in the MLB. But, you know, that's that's all I have for this this week's episode of the Walk It Off podcast. Um, uh, stay tuned for next week's episode as well for another special guest uh, covering baseball news next week as well. Uh, we had an amazing week this week covering Tatis's whole drama situation, talking to Drew Jones about high school ball, club ball as well, um, talking about his glove molding. <laughs> that was interesting. <laughs> and then we, we just talked about the Rockies returning to their winning ways. Christian, do you have anything else to add on to that? Oh, man, looking forward to next week. Uh, we'll see what what kind of news comes out yep. uh, in, the, in the next few days, but uh, looking forward to it. Yeah. Uh, as always, like, comment, send us in your questions. We'll cover them uh, yeah. as they come in. Yeah, most definitely. Thank you, guys.